practice about how technology, pedagogy, and content are treated in, in you know, teacher education programs or other places, find that typically they are separated from each other. Or at best, you know, Schulman's work has been around for a while, so people expect that, you know, pedagogy and content need to be covered, but technology is taken as being separate. You know, you have a separate set of courses about technology and so on. And T is sort of sitting out there, separate from everything. And we argue that this is learning to play jazz one note at a time. And there's a, um, the best way, it seems, to learn to play the piano is you take one note and play it for a month. So you just play that playing, playing, you keep playing that note for a month. The next month you move on to another note. Because, you know, learning to play the piano is becoming intimate with each note. And then after you've done all the notes, you spend a month playing nothing because music is also about the silences between the notes. And at the end of that six month or eight month, whatever period it is, you should be able to play box goldberg variations. Right? Sounds good, but doesn't work. And I think that what we need to do is apart from go move away from this one note at a time and move on something as opposed to some, you know, that where these three are integrated, interdisciplinary, allowing for creative play with both content pedagogy and technology. I mean, not both, all three, sorry. Um, this is a quote from Glenn Gold, People with the Music Theme, where he argued, and this is again coming back to the idea of technology, digital technology in particular being protein, that implicit electronic culture is the idea of multi-level participation in the creative process. And I think that becomes sort of a critical part, a way of thinking about it. So we thought we would um, engage in some play here. So here's a game that we called TPAC Mashup. Ah, uh, yeah, I, well, I, sure, it's not going to sell a lot, but that's okay. And, but the game um, is to help us identify some nods. And we actually did this at the NPLA Summit um, back in summer that Glenn just mentioned. And the way that works is pick any two out of those figure out how to integrate the third. For instance, start with C and T. So you could go with third grade language arts, grade six mathematics, undergraduate cultural studies, what have you. Choose some technology at random, a microscope, a wiki, Photoshop, and see how you could integrate that. So could you go with grade three language arts and Photoshop, or cultural studies and the microscope, right? What pedagogical strategies would you use? What would you do? And you'll see guys quickly enough that this is a pretty wicked problem. That the solutions that you come up with need to be creative, not just creative in the new, that something brand new or shocking came up, but in our new definition of new, that it's novel, effective, and whole. And of course, you could start with um, any of the other two. And what this game does is that you start seeing knobs that you didn't see before. And that's a really powerful thing to do. You start seeing possibilities and potentials that you could now take with your content, with your technology, and you know your pedagogical style, whatever it may be, that you can mix and match with this. So this is in keeping with this idea of the mashup, which is of course the new big thing, right? Okay, um, <clears throat> we are coming to the close of our talk here. I'm seeing it's 41 minutes, so I don't want to keep you guys up much longer. So it brings us to our refrain, as always. The teaching with technology is a wicked problem. Wicked problems require creative solutions. Teachers are designers of the total package. Closes the refrain. If you remember, we started with an intro, and uh, so in parallel to the intro, we need to have the outro. Um, this is something uh, Matt's a big guitar hero freak, so he taught me this term. So I want to start with a question. And the question is, where do educators live? Where do you live? Where do I live? Where do we live? Do we live in this box? Okay. Or, uh, as I would argue, or we would argue, we live bang, there in the middle. Be it Blackboard or Blackboard.com. This is where educators live. This is where you live. This is where I live. This is where we live. At this intersection between something that we want to convey to others, that's the content, the style, the technique that we would use to convey it, and the technologies and techniques that we have for doing so. It's at the intersection of these that we live. That's where we always have lived and always will. There. Quality teaching 
always understood the essential tension which leads to new ideas, novel, effective and whole. And so to end, let's play. Our future depends on it. Our children's future depends on it. That's our outro. Um, we'd like to thank a couple of people here um, who have been, without whom none of this DPAC stuff I think would have um, taken off, um, who very early on, we didn't even know about them at that time, um, so read the papers and stuff and pushed the ideas and the agenda and we'd like to thank Anthony.